serious people who once lacked motivation, but are now successful. What changed? Someone I greatly admire once said, Motivation doesn't factor much into my life. Motivation comes and goes. If you lived by motivation you would accomplish little. Or you would accomplish a wave every now and again. My life is run by discipline. Even when it's hard. Even when it's easy. I dedicate myself to discipline. Don't chase the little gremlin that is motivation. It runs too fast. Slowly climb the mountain that is discipline. You owe it to yourself. I seriously attribute my success to that mindset. Just realizing that most who are successful aren't better than me. They are just doing whatever it is they are doing. As opposed to my relative inaction. Seeing others become successful. So I said why can't that be me? Realizing no one else has their crap together either. And if I just show up I'll be ahead of the pack. Analysis paralysis is a killer. I went to therapy for my depression. Mine is a two part answer. First I found something I actually like doing, and not just something other people wanted me to do. Secondly, I got into the presence and therapy. Bam. Functional human being. Now I have a bachelor's degree, and working on my postgrad. I quit. When my high school counselor told me to quit, I did. I cried. I felt lost. I felt alone. I was always told I'd never make it to college. We were too poor. Loans were something rich people could get. Nobody told me any different. Why waste my time with school? I started working full time, and I was the best employee when I showed up. It was a theme that began a journey of quitting. It was a long journey with a lot of obstacles. Wasted time, parties and clubs, bars, and late nights. I met a girl though. She pushed me to try. I quit my job for a new one with an apprenticeship. I had a reason to show up. It was something I was genuinely interested in. I quit calling in sick. I quit going to bars and clubs. I quit drinking. I quit smoking. There were a lot of positive influences. People. Those were the highlights. Positive people that inspired me, pushed me harder, and asked more of me than anyone else ever had. I learned what humility was. I quit trying to prove myself. I quit trying to succeed. I quit trying to be the best. I quit feeling failure. I started just looking out for others. I quit worrying about what others thought about me, and started worrying about how to help others. My life took a turn for the better. I had mentors at work and a family of my own. A wife and a young daughter. I volunteered teaching school children about science technology engineering and math. I went back to school. To college. I had dropped out of high school with over a year's worth of credits from advanced placement courses. My apprenticeship gave me another year of credit and an associates. I entered an accelerated bachelor's program that had 16 hours of class every weekend for a year. 11 years after dropping out of high school, I graduated with my bachelor's. 13 years afterwards, I graduated with my master's. 16 years later, I'm now halfway through my PhD. I'm on the executive board of two nonprofits. I'm a senior civilian in the US Navy with a decade of service, and the CEO of my own consulting firm. What changed? I did. I quit being the kid who was told they'd never have a chance I started, being the man who gave others the opportunity they deserve. I found my passion. My pursuit is giving others a chance to learn and grow, showing them they have a choice. Edit, thank you for all the kind words. I didn't expect such a large response. Edit, I also realized it was 16 years ago. I'm getting old. My mental health. I was severely depressed throughout primary school and most of college. Graduated high school with a 2.5 GPA and then nearly failed out of college twice. When I could find any motivation at all I performed well. But most of the time I was suicidal and just couldn't make myself care about anything. I was finally allowed to see a therapist starting around 20 years old. And by my 5th year of college I'd become a 4.0 student. Went into a very competitive graduate school a few years later, and graduated top of my class, while being the only student working full time. I've excelled and been promoted in every job I've had since then. I relied on discipline instead. As someone who recently got out of a 7 year funk, here's a big thing I've learned. People are like cars they need fuel, not just food, but also other needs, like emotional support. As we go through life, 
we basically are running on fumes, because our parents slash teachers slash friends tell us we are not good enough, and not deserving of emotional resources. But if we can recognize, that we have needs, that aren't being met, we can find ways, to get those needs met. And once that emotional hunger has been sated, and our tank is full, motivation comes with it. For me, I found that there were some needs I had buried deep uncovering them, and addressing them has totally changed my life. It's only been a few days, that I've been like this, and I'll probably have another slump in the future, but this was a big breakthrough for me. Motivation finds you, is actually the last thing that finds you, unless you already have it. Been through a downward spiral, incurred loss after loss, topped with an irrecoverable loss, not financial. Thought I'd hit rock bottom on several occasions, yet lastly found out that rock bottom has a basement, when you literally have nothing left, you flip a coin to see, whether you're throwing the towel in, or climbing out of the crap hole you find yourself in. This is when motivation shows up, to stay. I went on a walk, to jump off a cliff, and in my way there the Bob Marley song 3 Little Bads came on even though it wasn't in the playlist I was listening to saying every little thing is gonna be alright and now I look at everything from a positive point of view. Honestly I went to a psychiatrist and we discovered that I have bipolar disorder. Once I got on medication I was a completely different person who actually wanted to be successful. I ended up with a girlfriend. Love her more than anything. And when I realized my lack of motivation and action in my life made her worry, I did everything I could to change it. College. I was so unmotivated and lazy in high school. I still got good grades, but I didn't want to go to school. When I got to college, something just clicked, and I for once actually wanted to learn and try hard. The tuition was also a good motivator. I taught high school for half a year, and one of the students was so incredibly smart, and pointed out all of my flaws on how to be a better educator, high schoolers have no filter, and say whatever, is on their mind, and it motivated me to do better, and I decided to go for my masters. I went to the doctor, and asked for ADHD meds, and boom, where I was, once a lazy perfectionist, that couldn't get anything done at all, turned into everything making sense being able to break up projects into minor tasks that could be accomplished and general happiness skyrocketed fear of poverty i moved upstate where a lot of my friends had been accepted to college but i didn't have a lot of money i lived with one of them who had just got a place but his girlfriend started hanging out since they had privacy two weeks later my stuff was by the door so i got the paper and looked at rentals this was a while ago and the only room I could find that was cheap was in that house. You know it. That house in the neighborhood with the broken porch and three cars out front that don't work. And whilst it's and heroin addicts coming and going at all hours. The more I stayed there, and the more I saw how they lived, the more I wanted better. I was also working in a coffee shop as a waiter. With people that had been working there for years. Or even decades. One day during late summer, I was heading out to work. And one of the addicts had passed out with a needle still kinda stuck in his arm. One of the six dogs that lived there was licking it. I stood and stared. That was before the morning shift. That afternoon. After work. I went straight to the JC and registered. I worked harder than ever. Ever flagged. All I had to think of was those days at that house. Laid off the weed. I went against my parents wishes. Ended up disowned. But at least I took my life back. When I was 18 I was overweight sitting on my parents couch watching TV. A friend of my parents offered me a job in real estate development. I started working for about 2 years and saved up enough money to travel around the world. I came back after a year of traveling and now run my own property management company. What changed for me was having successful family friend. Probably not what you were looking for. Nearly went blind due to a severe case of treatment resistant pigmentary glaucoma which ultimately required 3 surgeries to correct in my early slash mid 20s. I'm an American millennial. Had I not been on my parents insurance, the whole fiasco likely would have set me up for a lifetime of debt, or I just would have gone blind. At the time we still weren't really sure if I was going to need additional surgeries in a few years after the age of 26 when I would have automatically been booted off my parents insurance. 
got my ass in gear to get a career that would reliably offer health insurance or pay well enough that I could buy my own private plan. I feel I was lucky first off because I had parents in a position to still have me on their insurance. But also, most people don't have their first major health crisis until later in life when it's harder to change the course of their finances slash career. I see this playing out in many of my friends. I'm nevertheless in favor of socialized health care. I don't want other people to go through the terror that I did and many go through far worse. FWIW. Terms like motivation and discipline are so broad to be fairly useless. That's just a huge rock to lift. But if you can break them down into more specific skills, changing your behavior might be easier. For example, if I think of myself as unmotivated to finish this painting project, it can be really difficult to summon the energy to work on it. But if I narrow my issue down to the difficulty I'm having in initiating the painting process, the barrier becomes so much easier to overcome. I know that once I get started, I'll probably get into and really get some painting done. Or maybe I'm reluctant to work on it, because there are a lot of steps involved, and I feel a little overwhelmed. But maybe I could work on just one part of it that feels manageable. And tomorrow the whole process will feel a lot less intimidating. Just keep chipping away at it. Anyway, point being, motivation is really an umbrella term for a whole suite of trays, organization, planning, task initiation, follow through, and see. Most people have a few strong suits and a couple weaknesses, but being specific about your obstacles can make them so much easier to manage. I stopped blaming others for my failures, a very difficult thing to do. Motivation may start you down the path but discipline is what maintains the path. Motivation is fleeting. Op, thank you for posting this, and thank you for the stories you've shared in this thread. This is something that I really needed to see. I got married and realized that, if I wanted to be a father, which I always have, I'd better go get a career. The day after our wedding I told my wife I was going to apply to law school, which I did. And now 8 years later I have a great job as an attorney. Last year we bought a house, and we have 2 kids. My motivation is still, based on providing for my family. Getting a schedule, and sticking to it. I found it hard to do anything, if I don't set myself times to do it by. Something just clicked. I weighed 190 pounds. I wasn't going anywhere in my career. And I was just overall unhealthy with my anger. For me, honesty is the best motivator. When I'm honest with myself, and embrace the truth, nothing anyone else can say bothers me anymore. It sounds like shaming, but I would say out loud at work, when there were cookies offered. I can't. I'm fat. This made a lot of cowalkers surprised and worry at first. Some of them laughed at the randomness of it. But it worked for me. And sometimes made the awkward oh I can't have, that one cookie won't hurt etc just disappear. I have now lost 60 pounds. I took a lot of leadership courses and sought opportunities from upper management and am now in a temporary management position. And I'm healthy. This question is backwards for me. It's strange. I used to be so so motivated, talented, had tons of money, I was also a heroin addict. Now that in 5 years sober I've lost all motivation, I'm lazy, poor and hate working, I guess it was the drugs keeping me going. I used to barely pass in high school, and did horrible in school. My parents were always there to clean up my messes and brush it under the rug. Once I lived on my own, and realized the only person to clean up my mess was me, I started. Now I'm a straight A on a student. Realize that the world is made up of people who have no idea what they are doing most of the time. I got pregnant my senior year in high school. It gave me a reason to do better in life. Homelessness. I now have PTSD and work to jobs. Stopped hanging around my pot smoking friends as much. Stopped caring about friends and social crap in general pursue my own interests and career without much outside influence. Work out every single day and read as much as possible, really enhancing your mind like nothing else. I was a 5 feet 6, 210 pounds incoming freshman who had always got below average grades. I played football, but my football team had a loser mentality. I joined wrestling, and there I met the best community I've ever been in. 
There I realized that my purpose as a person, of being someone who gives themselves for a greater good for what they care about. I'm now 5 feet 9 to 10 eyes and 180 pounds while doing better in school. I'm now starting in football and wrestling is coming together well. TLDR, find your purpose and give it all for said purpose. Understanding that motivation is fleeting, but discipline makes things happen. Without discipline the chances of actually completing any task that is ultimately highly rewarding are slim. Establish a goal, something you want. Reverse engineer the steps you need to take to make that goal come true. Build the discipline to grind it out. A couple years in the Air Force, working on the flight line will either make or break you. I learned hard work and the meaning of it. Got out, moved away from everyone I know, and started a new life. I work in banking now. Ended up buying a house and showed the friends I made in the service that they too can make it on their own. As a bonus, my college is free when I want to use it thanks the post 9 over 11 GI Bill. I'll give you the opposite, 20 years of motivation and success, followed by 10 of zero motivation and little success as defined by society. That is, the big difference and turning point was life happened, innocence was lost, I learned what the game was, and realized I didn't want to play, just wasn't worth it, while I'm technically sad for what I've lost. I'm definitely happier to have spent my time as I've spent it. The last 10 years, no use playing in a rigged system. I'd rather do the bare minimums and enjoy my limited time slash one life. I was a terrible student. 7th grader when it all started to go downhill. And then by my second semester senior year of high school, I went into the final of the one class I needed to pass. In order to graduate needing a 160% okay the final in order to pass. Thanks to the teacher, being far kinder than I ever deserved, I graduated in time. Point is, I was horrible student who lacked motivation, and not importantly, discipline. When I finished high school in 2017, I decided not to go to college yet. I took some time off from school, and sold my soul to the work of retail for about a year and a half. See, when I was 13 years old. I read about a guy who had loaded some camping gear onto the back of his bicycle and didn't a year and a half biking from northern Alaska to the southern tip of South America. When I read about that guy, I already loved biking and camping. So I developed a bit of an obsession for bicycle touring. The summer when I was 16, I did my first bike camping trip, riding to a state park 40 miles from my house that my family had driven to many times before, camping there for a night and biking home the next day, it was a ton of fun. And do the next summer, I moved up to a 4 day, 200 mile bike camping trip. I decided if I wanted to do some big crazy trip like that one that first inspired me, the best time to do it would be before I get stuck with a bunch of college debt. After I graduated, I did another big bike trip, spending 20 days riding almost one. 300 miles from my home in south central Wisconsin clockwise around Lake Michigan. I got back from that trip with $2 and changed to my name. So I got to work saving up for my big cross country bike adventure. Last August, I decided I finally had enough savings to go for it. So I quit my job. And on August 17th, I left my home in Wisconsin with the goal of riding to Seattle and down the Pacific coast, right around Thanksgiving. I got to Eugene, Oregon, so I rented a storage unit there and left the bike in it while I flew home for the holidays. When I came back to Oregon shortly after New Year's, I found it to be too cold and rainy in the Pacific Northwest for what I was doing, so I hopped on an Amtrak from Eugene to Monterey, California, about 100 miles south of the Bay Area. I biked from there to San Diego, then turned east into Arizona. I was in Sedona when the coronavirus started to get really serious in mid-March. So I ended my trip a couple months early by biking up to Flagstaff and getting on a train back home. Since then, I've gone back to work. I was planning to go to college starting this fall, but I'm not sure how I would do with online classes in the event that colleges still aren't open due to the virus. So that might get pushed back another year. Here's the point, though. I think we all have big crazy dreams like riding a bicycle across an entire country. We all fantasize about what we'd do if we won the lottery and never had to work again. 
but it takes a really special type of person to look at a dream like biking across a country, which sounds crazy at first, and then to think about what it would actually take to make it a reality. We all have the ability to pursue those dreams. We just get in our own way by convincing ourselves it's impossible. I realized I have an incredible gift because I don't stand in my own way, but I'll let myself waste that gift for far too long. Never again. I've been feeling a bit lost in life since I got home. This was something I dreamed of since I was 13 years old, and now at 21, it's finally done. I dreamed of doing this for more than a third of my life, actively worked for it for the past 5 years, and 3 years ago, it completely took over my life. So once you've accomplished your greatest goals in life, where do you go from there? How do you find the drive to dream even bigger, and then push yourself to pursue that next big thing? This is something I've been struggling with a lot lately, but I'm sure that with a bit more time, I'll answer these questions. And once I do, when I find my next crazy dream, I won't let myself waste my drive to pursue it. TL, Doctor I dreamed of something that I wanted badly enough to do whatever it took to get there. Once I accomplished that dream, I realized I had an incredible gift in that I took a dream many people would call crazy or even impossible and I made it a reality. Although I don't yet know what my next big crazy idea will be, I won't waste that gift for so long before I start working towards the next chapter of my life. I had a woman I was really in to get into a huge blowout fight with me. I was working as a bartender and event staff at a winery part time and saving all my money so I could buy a motorcycle. The gist of her argument was that I wasn't a real man and she could never love man child. I got mad. Loved my job at the winery, but I needed to make more cash and have an interesting job that sounded really awesome and sexy. Thinking I'll show you bish. I'll be the most manly man you ever met. So went to a trade school graduated 3.8 with two majors in aviation. Yeah suck on that. Was financially independent as a bachelor till covid hit. I never saw her after coming back home, but she was the most important woman in my life. Like out of spite. Got diagnosed with ADHD. Got on meds. Went from a 1.8 average to a 3.4 average GPA. Started working a 45, 50 hour a week job and lost 20 LBS. During a freaking pandemic. It's amazing. I always felt somewhere. Deep within me. There was a type A. Successful and passionate person. And I found her. And I'm keeping her. Only wish I would have done it sooner. I was dating a girl. She was the most beautiful angel that ever walked this planet. She was kind and generous, and she loved me. Then she broke up with me, and I was crushed. I took a look back at every argument that we had ever had, and they all boiled down to money. My value as a person is directly related to my bank account. I want to have the opportunity to make her value me again. So I put in the work. Found a better job. Kissed ass. Worked hard. Started early and stayed late. I began teaching myself new skills that I can monetize. Now in another year or two I will be completely debt free. I have all my bills caught up. I have my car paid off. I don't know if she will ever love me again. But at least now I'm a better person. You realize that accepting responsibility also empowers you to be able to make changes for your own self. For example, if you're fat, if you go, oh well. I have fat people jeans and sit down with a 2L of Pepsi, well that's pretty lazy and depressing. But if you go, well I'm fat. And I know, if I work my ass off, I can torch the crap out of my fat and slim down. It empowers you to know you are able to make the change you want to see, and don't have to blame it on others. I convinced my doctors to let me off medication and I stopped listening to the people who diagnosed me while I was on that medication. I quit believing I was broken, and I remembered who I knew I factually was and actually am. Started making lists, and writing things down. Helped me focus, 